Hi, in a recent video, you saw me score this 50 inch LG plasma TV from the dumpster and it mostly works. There's an issue with the screen flicker on it, a couple of little lines across it and things like that. But anyway, I thought we'd open it up, uh, check out what's inside this thing, maybe repair it. I don't know whether or not it's wor worth repairing something like this. It weighs almost 50 kilos. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous uh, compared to modern LCD TVs. They chew a ton of power. They uh, produce EM radiation, which a lot of people uh, complain about as well. Interference, all sorts of stuff. So their plasma TVs are really just like completely dead technology, totally killed by LCDs. But hey, you know, they do contain a lot of usable salvageable uh, parts in them. And well, I guess if you can fix it, if you can mount the bloody 50 kilos up on the wall, then, well, maybe they're worth repairing and get some use out of things. But anyway, let's just take a look inside, see what's going on. Here we go. Alright, I think I got most of the screws out, although probably not. Odds are I've missed one. Um, so the back should lift off. Ta-da! Let's, yep, I got them all. Unbelievable. Wow, look at that. We're in like Flynn. Now I really enjoy looking inside these plasma TVs because they're always well engineered, well laid out, at least the top brands are. Um, I'm not sure of the absolute, like the real bottom basement uh, crap ones, but you know, LG, um, at least, okay, some people are gonna argue, you know, a shit brand, but hey, they at least one of the big uh, name brands. And this is beautifully engineered and laid out, um, you know, at first glance and everything like that. We've got all our high voltage boards, it's all modular. So uh, like some of these uh, large caps here are likely to be the cause of uh, failure and uh, cause of that uh, flicker, you know, fairly odds on in that respect because there is a horrible screen flicker on this thing. It's hard to show on camera. It's almost impossible to get that sort of flicker on camera. But as soon as we uh, turned it on, we noticed that, uh, yeah, it was just, oh, you couldn't watch it. You couldn't actually, um, you know, stare at the screen. It was that horrible. So there's something going wrong there. We'll have to have a close look at those caps, but beautifully modular. Got all our main uh, video processing all on this board here. Dead giveaway is all the huge ASICs. It's probably obscured by the bar there. Um, huge, big die cast bar in these things with the big die cast uh, chassis in there. So, but anyway, a couple of big, uh, three big ASICs on that board, big display processing. Then we've got our row drivers um, either side and our um, uh, column driver boards, they're not one big PCB because you can't manufacture, well you can manufacture a PCB this big which is like um, just under a meter long or something like that but it's, it, you can get them specially made but it's much easier as they've done, you might be able to see here, split them up into individual board, three separate boards like that, it's just easier to uh, get them bare board manufactured, easier to get them assembled etc. So that's what they've done, so they're the uh, column driver boards boards top and bottom huge row drive boards these are the big power beasts and this is where all the power has been uh, uh, consumed in these plasma TVs which have horrible power consumption I might actually measure it actually just what the um, just the static uh, power consumption of this thing is because they're absolutely horrible compared to modern LCDs got a couple of little pissant fans up here they're actually um, shock are they shock mounted? Sort of loosely, yeah, yeah, they're, they're actually shock compliant mounted on there to minimize noise. So that's not bad at all. Little bit of, uh, little bit of dust on them, but this is, this is a pretty, pretty clean unit actually. And by the way, little, um, just a safety um, tip, these things generate, they, these can store a lot of energy in the reservoir caps in here. So a well-designed unit will have bleed resistors on the main uh, filter caps in here, so it should bleed off the energy. But you don't want to be go poking around here, A, 
when the power's on, unless you uh, use an isolator supply, uh, you know, proper probing, you know exactly what you're doing, or you've just disconnected the thing and then you go touching around. You don't want to do that. I've got our high voltage caps here all uh, siliconed together so they don't flap around in the breeze, and it's very, very nice. I'll uh, show you some close ups. We've got our, all our um, uh, RF beads over here on all the cable ends, so that's to pass. Uh, uh, EMI requirements even though these things spew out all sorts of garbage, but yeah, I guess they meet some standard We've got our vacuum fluorescent display down the bottom, which is a particular feature of this uh, unit as I showed in the uh, Dumpster dive video, but Beautifully modular engineering. I love it, but yeah 50 kilos. It's all this huge die cast weight and everything the big glass panel on the front and oh man unbelievable so here's our main power supply boards and I don't see any bulges in the in the caps and they're uh, Sanwa, yes, yeah, Sanwa brand caps. Um, yeah, not exactly the best. They're not Nippon Chemicon or uh, Nichicon there. Yep, um, they're, they're not quite one hung low, but geez, uh, probably not far off it. So yeah, but locally, even though there's no bulging in those, um, you might replace those as a matter of course. Um, these other ones here, I can't get the brand. Apart from that, it's uh, not bad quality, uh, a single all single sided board construction as all these power supplies are typically are to save a bit of cost. Everything's uh, silicon down quite reasonably, uh, quite nicely and uh, the transformers look decent quality. The uh, big inductors up here, they look like they're doing the business. They're big uh, common mode chokes are they by the looks of it. Looks like two separate windings either side so that's a dead giveaway for a common mode choke. and. Uh, some decent uh, heat sinking and attachment with the uh, silicon pads under here. Some of them are, some of them aren't, but uh, I can show you that in a second. But uh, generally that's not too bad. It's Even though they've got some fans on here, it's you know, minimally uh, fan cooled. There's not a huge amount of airflow with these tiny little fans in such a large volume. You can see our main drive transistors here and they've got a couple of other One's just uh, not as well um, attached to the heatsink there. They don't have uh, sill pads, but they don't need to be because they don't need any uh, isolation. They wouldn't have any exposed metal on the back of those. They'd just be the plastic packages. And likewise, uh, they've got a, a bunch of uh, diodes there attached to these heatsinks down in there. So yeah, that's all right. It's doing the business. Many more power transistors all tucked away in there or driving these big ass transformers here. And here's the main video input uh, board. We've got a huge big ass uh, ASIC processor under there. We've got ourselves the uh, digital, or is this an analog tuner? I think it might be old enough to have an analog tuner in this thing. I don't think it's digital. I um, see, I have to find a day code actually, see what this thing is. But uh, anyway, if you're wondering what all this tape here is, that's actually um, RF uh, shielding tape. They're actually connecting this heatsink over here with the main chassis over here. And if you don't believe that, you can always get your meter on there. It's going to have conductive thread in there. Ta da! Look at that. So they don't want this heatsink here flapping around in the breeze RF wise, um, just picking up all sorts of uh, crap and, and re radiating it. So they're, they're deliberately shorting it out to the chassis over here. And as I mentioned before, the wiring in here, they've, um, yeah, gone to town. They've put an extra loop there in the uh, ferrite, uh, surrounding the ferrite bead there, just so that they uh, take the edge off all that RF crap. And they've got more of that hidden down in here. You can see the vacuum fluorescent display board down in there, because this thing has a big uh, vacuum fluoro display, which uh, reflects off a glass uh, surface down here and then it's got uh, a capacitive uh, touch interface or uh, something like that to detect that your finger presses on these um, imaginary projected uh, displays. Yeah, they've gone to town on the uh, tape here. You can see it joining this big die cast uh, frame here with the main metal chassis down here. They've done that on that side, that side and uh, also over here as well for the input connectors over here. And for those playing along at home, there's those super high quality Senwa caps. Hmm.
I'm always a sucker for nicely wound chokes like that. Oh, it's just beautiful, look at them. Big beefy suckers too, love it. Mm. You'll notice that these high voltage row driver ICs here got their own uh, heat sink, but they're also, look, very well sealed all the way around like that. Why? Because the high voltage is going to attract dust and moisture is going to be an issue and all that sort of stuff. So you really want to seal those things. It looks like they're little uh, quad flat packs under there by the looks of it. Yeah, but you definitely want to seal those in from all sorts of dust and contamination and crap. Now in terms of plasma TV voltage rails, they're going to have two major supply rails. One's called VS and the other's called VA. The VS supply, uh, why they, well VS, V supply voltage, but it's actually the horizontal grid supply voltage. So that's going to these horizontal uh, row driver boards here. And that's going to be this main power supply in here, this lead going out here. I'll show you the close up of the silk screen in a second. It does indeed say uh, VS, and that's gonna be typically at 190 volts uh, DC. So as, and a lot of power, as you can tell by all the uh, uh, heat sinking and uh, you know, all the big beefy components on the thing. But that should be about 190 volts. And in addition to that, you're gonna have a vertical grid supply voltage. That's called VA, and that's gonna be typically in the order of 65 volts. So let's see if we can find the, those in the power supply sections here. Yeah, please excuse the upside down nature of the video footage here. I know the, all the electrons are going to fall out, but you can see it there. VS, 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 and ground there. So they've got three um, lines. They're going to be all uh, shorted together for extra current handling capacity, of course. So that is going to go out and supply this horizontal board over here so that's our horizontal grid supply voltage so that's popping out there going into a main connector on there we've got some extra filtering happening in here you should also notice the va down in there so they've got that uh, for the vertical grid supply voltage going through to uh, the main board through on the main uh, supply as well. So they're gonna be our two main supply voltage. So, the, so in a plasma TV, they're the two things you're gonna wanna check first if there's anything wrong with anything. And then we've got this smaller power supply module here, not nearly as high a power, you can tell by the uh, significantly smaller heat sinking. And this is all your low voltage uh, stuff. So you're gonna find, let's get down in here, you're gonna find things like, uh, you know, there we go, you know, 5 volt and 3.3 and uh, various stuff like that, just for all your digital logic side of things. Oh, check out that tiny little fuse in there. Wonder what that puppy's doing, but look, it's a very interesting uh, axial type fuse. Wow, fascinating. Anyway, there are a couple of uh, fuses over this board. Look, the, um, the horizontal board here we go it's got uh yeah it's got a socketed fuse and there's a few more um on the main uh, power supply ones in there and all scattered around the place so you know occasionally if you have a fault eh, it could be a blown fuse but usually there's a blown fuse for a reason and these are hrc ones too none of this glass fuse rubbish so with those two supply rails i was telling you about uh, 190 volts for the horizontal and 65 odd volts for the uh, vertical you can see we've got two different types of caps here. You'll notice that these puppies here, sorry for the shaky camera footage, uh, they're 250 volt rated. What brand are they? I can't quite see them at the moment. Are they Rubicons? Anyway, have a close look. So they would be your main ones for your horizontal um, supply, your 190 odd volts. And then these puppies here, Check it out, they're 100 volt rated, so they're going to be for your 65 volt vertical, and ta-da, no surprises for guessing, the wiring comes straight out of there over to your vertical boards here. And those things aren't particularly high power, so what they can do is just loop the power through here and have it come in over there like that, no problems whatsoever. In fact, they have sensibly marked those, there we go, VA, that's our, going to be our 65 volt supply plus they're running the uh, 5 volt there for the digital as well and ground and that's basically all there is for those boards so they just daisy chain those across these boards here not consuming a huge amount of power at all you can tell by the fact that a they've daisy chained them through the boards like that and b oops that's my remote um, cable just hanging down there flapping the breeze sorry about that my remote uh, wireless microphone Sennheiser um, EW100 G3 
wireless mic if you're wondering which one I'm using at the moment. Anyway, um, yeah, they're just daisy chaining those through and uh, the wiring is just really pissant. Look at that tiny stuff. So you know there's not a huge amount of power there. Oh, actually, ta-da, look at this. This is handy, they actually tell you. There we go, VS 190 volts and uh, VA 60 volts. So I was slightly off there on the uh, vertical grid uh, supply voltage, but there you go, no problems whatsoever. 5.3 volts there for the uh, power supply. Why is it 5.3? instead of your nominal uh, 5 volts of 5.25, well, you want to set it so that you're allowing for voltage crop drop across all your wiring and all your boards. So if you've got your main 5 volt supply voltage on this high voltage power, oh, not, not high voltage, but your main switch mode uh, digital power supply uh, here, then you want to allow, because of the huge big space modular nature and all the cabling running off, you want to allow for the voltage drop in the cable. So you're going to typically set your 5 volt rail here, not to 5 volts, but 5.3, and that would be fairly typical. So when it gets over to these boards, eh, it might be nominally, you know, 5 to 5.25 volts. And 570 watts max total power dissipation, thank you very much. <sighs> Man, you can fly to Alpha Century on 570 watts. Kidding me? All right, let's see how much power this puppy takes. Just uh, static. So I'll plug the thing in and probably heard some relays click in there. And I uh, don't know if it's actually switched on or not. It's still lying on the floor here, but uh, there we go. We've got 100 and... No, there we go, 230 watts. And so it must be, uh, obviously, not, that's not standby. That's, uh, that's displaying something on the screen at the moment. So it's obviously booted up. So, yeah, over 200 watts there. Wow. So we can see our power factor. There we go. We've got a 250 uh, VA. And our power factor there, there we go, 0.82. But of course, that 200 odd watts is going to change drastically with the information on the screen, though. That's not going to be consistent at all. I think it's displaying a white menu screen at the moment. So just for fun, let's just measure our main uh, DC supply rail here. So that's going to be our ground. And yep, I've definitely got it plugged into the volts. You betcha. And uh, let's measure the VA first, shall we? The vertical grid. There we go, bang on, 60 volts, as uh, that label said it should be. And now let's check our VS, 192. So there you go, um, we're bang on there. Although uh, we'd also probably check that for some uh, voltage ripple as well. And just for kicks, we can do that with our Bryman 869 here with its uh, dual display capability. We can uh, do measure our AC and our DC at the same time. So let's do that. There we go. And this is VA. It's our vertical grid. It's not the quickest, but uh, there we go, 60 volts. It, well, it's initially showing oh, six volts AC, but yeah, it's like under a volt AC. Nothing going on there at all. Nothing doing. Let's try a horizontal grid, 192, and it's got Ah, oh, only about, yeah, about the same amount of ripples. So we're doing pretty well there. Nothing wrong with that uh, supply at all. So that's uh, those, um, those main rails aren't a source for our uh, horrible flicker that we're seeing. So at this point, I'm not that enthusiastic about continuing trying to repair this thing, the horrible uh, screen flicker on it. Plus there's a few, uh, I think if I remember rightly, uh, vertical lines on the thing just uh, randomly going through. So yeah, it could be power supply issues, but the vertical uh, lines or any uh, horizontal lines or anything like that could be any of the driver boards. And then, well, unless you can get a new driver board, eh, sometimes um, some of the devices you can re heat and things like that if they're BGA uh, parts and stuff like that but these ones aren't and well I don't know about the vertical uh, drivers but oh it all just eh, these plasma screens they're just they're awful they chew a lot of power they're massively heavy so trying to mount them um, somewhere and the image quality is well you know some people rave about them oh the blacks are really black you know and I don't know. But yeah, they're just uh, just evil things that are just, these, these things, plasma screens just fill 
the junkyards now because they they die very easily because they were really higher power uh, devices so they fail pretty early and um, they're just you know, huge nobody wants a big thick heavy screen like this anymore that chews a ton of power that's notoriously troublesome so yeah everyone switched over to LCDs and these just I don't know how many people are still running uh, plasma at home if they're still going from 2008 um, this one so you know big 50 inch you know state of the art for its day and yeah it, it did the job but um, yeah this is not a particularly top of the line one I don't think I think this was like a pretty Joe blogs uh, you know affordable average one but yeah I've got no use for it really so uh, when you get these they're you know usually worth people are tossing them out hey you know, scrap them for the parts. You, you know, you're talking about big uh, high voltage power transistors. You've got some big caps in there, even if they're Samway, you might keep them for something. You've got nice big common mode chokes you'd rip out, uh, some nice transformers you might be able to reuse and take all the boards and modules out. Keep those in your, uh, you know, your, I've got like containers filled with, uh, you know, boards like this. So if I need a part, I need a nice big high voltage uh, cap here. I can get one of those from here. Need a nice choke. They've got some fuses in them. You'd rip those out. And you might be able to just salvage uh, some parts like that. Usually I just leave them as whole boards in there. So if I'm desperate for a part, I haven't got time to go desolder all the parts like I did when I was a kid and put them in the parts drawers and stuff like that. Not anymore, but yeah keep the bare boards. Heat sinks are always very useful. You get the fans out of them, you put those in your fan bins and uh, yeah, but all your, you know, your digital stuff is all pretty useless, but there might be some uh, surface mount caps on there. You might be able to reuse at a pinch, for example. Um, so it's worth salvaging these things. If people are chucking them out, eh, there's lots of useful parts in them. You get all the ferrites. If you're desperate for wiring, you might get some of that, but yeah, uh, there's some, you know, quite reasonably decent parts on these things so well worth salvaging so there you go that's a look inside another plasma tv the lg 50 inch whatever model it is who cares they're ancient obsolete nobody wants them scrap them for parts beauty if you want to discuss it link down below to the ev blog forum i'll leave youtube or blog comments and if you like it please give it a big thumbs up yeah, sorry, people will complain that I didn't go through and repair it. Ugh, what's the point? I got better things to do. So, yeah, I would probably, I don't know, what, what will I do with it? Just, yeah, exactly as I said, rip the boards out and, eh, she'll be right. Might dump the rest. Bit of a shame, but I, I, I've got no use for it. What the hell am I going to use a 50 kilo, 50 inch plasma for? I wouldn't, barely, wouldn't even be able to mount it on the wall here, I don't think. Uh, the Jiprock screws wouldn't even hold the damn thing in, I suspect. So, uh, nah. Catch you next time.